wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he said, Before I begin to share what the Lord has been sharing with me, I want to ask that you will join me, for those of you that are able, in kneeling as we pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you now, and we ask that your Holy Spirit will be poured out. Lord, hide me behind your cross, and I'm asking that you will shine forth to my friends, shine through me, and I'm asking that your words will be spoken. Precious Jesus, we ask that you will be uplifted tonight, and we just want to thank you in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So if you will go with me to Ephesians chapter 3, I'm not going to take a look at the text specifically. I'm actually going to look uh, before our text a little bit at what made possible in Paul's life the victories that he went through. Um, this is It's interesting because I was just studying this on my own and then I remembered all of a sudden that this was our text, and I was like, okay, well, Lord, you brought this to me, and so I pray that this may be a blessing to each one of us tonight. Ephesians chapter 3, and we will begin in verse 3. Or, yes, it says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, whereby when ye read, 
ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And so he's sharing here the mystery of Christ was made known. How? It was revealed to him. And how was it revealed to him? And I found the answers I was studying in verse 8. Uh, we'll drop down to verse, sorry, verse 7. It says, Unto whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints is this grace given, that I should preach unto the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Paul had come in contact with Christ and he began to see who he really was. He wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an apostle, I'm good, I got this. He says, unto me who am least, less than the least of the saints, I'm not even worthy to be called one. But God has called me. And because he's called me, he's shown his righteousness to me. He's shown the riches of the glory of God to me. Therefore, I'm willing to share, and I will do what God has called me to do. And in verse 9, he says, To make all men see what is the fellowship of that mystery, from which the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. He, as he came in contact with Christ, he began to see who he was, and he began to have humility. And we have to ask the Lord, moment by moment, day by day, I need you. Show me yourself so that I'm not saying, I got this, I know what I'm doing. We have to ask Jesus moment by moment, give me more of you. When we do this, we receive the ability to go forth with courage. And verse 12, it says, in whom we have boldness and access and confidence by the faith of him. We have all of those things because we've come in contact with Jesus. We've stopped saying, I've got this. I know, who I, I know what I can do. How is the experience of others affected by who we are, though? Because if we're out there saying, oh, I can do this, or no, you know what? I can't do this. Jesus can. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll begin in verse 14. And it says, Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. It's my prayer that for each of us, when people come in contact with us, that's what they see. They're able to be victorious because they came in contact with us and they said, and that we will have consistent victory. That the knowledge of Christ may be made known by us everywhere we go. And people will be walking in, what? Jesus has been here. I, I don't know what it is, but Jesus has been here. That's my prayer for each of us. That it can be said, Jesus was here. It continues on in verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15 says, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. Let Jesus be poured out through us because the only way we can have victory for anything is if he's shining through. In verse 16, though, it shares the flip side. It says, To the one, we are the savor of death unto death. 
and to the other the savor of life unto life. Then it asks an interesting question. It says, and who is sufficient for these things? And the answer is, Jesus is sufficient for these things. I can't do it, you can't do it, they can't do it. Only Jesus is sufficient to be a savor of life. We can't become a savor of life. We can't be something that we want to be. Only Jesus. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 7, we sing this all the time as a scripture song. But I want us to take a close look. It says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. If we could learn that lesson to moment by moment say, it's your power, Lord. The excellency of the power is of you. I am not doing this. God is faithful, and he wants to be uplifted in us. That the excellency of the power is of him. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46 and verse 12. And speaking here, it says, Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. Oh, but it gets beautiful. He says, I will bring near my righteousness, and it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not tarry, and I will place my salvation in Zion, for Israel my glory. This is an appeal to us tonight. Jesus says, I am bringing my righteousness to you. Those of you who are saying, I, who may have said, I've got this, I'm good enough. None of us are. Those of you who may have said, it's okay, I'll figure this out. He says, when you're trying to figure it out on your own, you're far from righteousness. But he says, listen to me. I will bring my righteousness to you. Will you take it? Do you want it? I have it. I, I'm ready to give it to you. I will give you my salvation, and it will not tarry. It will not just take forever. I'm here for you. Do you want it? So the only way that we can have victory is when we let Jesus shine through. Go back with me to Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll look at verse, Ephesians chapter 3, and looking at verse 14. Um, Ephesians 3 and verse 14. Paul writing here says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to come to him, to let him shine out in our, his life within us. The question he's asking is, will you let me? Listen to me, I'm bringing my righteousness near unto you. Will you take it? And that's the thought I want to leave with you. How many of you want to take that for yourselves tonight? Say, I'm taking that gift that the Lord is giving. If you would just raise your hand and just that gift that God is giving, we want it. Never turn it away. I want to invite um, Pastor Belte to join me. Oh, Father in heaven, your word is our life. We thank you so much for the many men and women through the centuries, Father, who were willing to lay down their lives.
so that this last generation could have these love letters from you to us. We thank you for a love that just wouldn't let us go. Oh, Father, what encouragement we get from the words of, of Paul, who finally came face to face with you on that road to Damascus, only to discover that the God he thought he was serving, he was actually persecuting. And his love worthy for you and gratitude was so deep that he went to the ends of the earth to tell people about you. May that love inspire us. May we ever be mindful of the fact that we have nothing of which to boast. You are our righteousness from beginning to end. Thank you so much for your loving kindness and for the message this evening. We thank you for the sacred hours of the Sabbath and for the start of this new week. And we pray that you will go before us and that you will teach us day by day how to keep our thoughts centered upon you. We thank you for this as we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
We are so pleased you could join us for this special event here at Watch the Hills Academy and College. If you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to help support the making of these programs, you can find the donation information in the description below. Thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you.